All right, so I see more people are jumping on here. We also just went live on our Facebook as well. And uh, so tonight's webinar is about where to find the most profitable real estate investments. Uh, we put out new webinars normally quarterly. Uh, this is actually the last time I'll be doing this uh, topic. So this is a good uh, topic for popular uh, presentation here. Uh, we've done a lot last year. We updated recently, going to break into how we create deals in the Jersey market in some hot areas as well that we're focusing on in New Jersey here also. So we're going to break into a night. I'll be speaking for about 30 to uh, 40 minutes and then we'll open up for questions as well. I see more people are jumping on here. Great to see. Um, now, as we get going here, please put your uh, questions in the Q&A or the chat and I'll be able to answer all those questions at the end of this presentation. So let's get into it. All right, quick disclaimer, uh, it's not a solicitation for funds, it's not tax advice or legal advice. We're gonna talk about how we've structured different deals in the past here in New Jersey, how we've kind of created deals by negotiating confidently with landlords and brokers and kind of how that process works. So here's our agenda tonight. Uh, we'll break into a people's capital groups model, how we find discounted apartment buildings for sale, reposition them, improve the buildings physically, lease them up for top dollar, figure out more ways to make income on the property and refinance over time. We'll talk about our preferred local markets here in New Jersey and why we like those markets and some things going on locally in uh, certain markets here. Also uh, creating a deal, right? Uh, as we say in the uh, the presentation for this, the uh, you know advertisements for this webinar, that deals actually really aren't found so much. They're actually created. A lot of deals don't look like a deal on the surface, and you have to go digging to actually identify the value. So it's really not about just, you know, oh, man, I happen to get lucky and find something. There's actually a strategy and a process to doing it, which maybe that's good news, right? It's not just throwing a dart and hopefully landing on the right spot. So we'll also talk about value add. What is value add? Why is it so important? And how does that work into creating a deal? And it will touch on PCG's historical performance and just the process and getting qualified to learn more about our specific investments here in New Jersey apartment buildings. Okay, so let's break into it tonight. And uh, by the way, uh, this is being uh, recorded also. So hopefully you can stick around for the whole presentation. But if not, we'll send you a recording tomorrow there. And again, any questions, I encourage questions. Please put them in the Q&A and the chat. Always good to see that. So here's a summary of our strategy at People's Capital Group. So real estate investments are historically an excellent hedge against the stock market. Uh, what we've seen is the stock market is quite volatile, uh, very fast paced. No one really knows why it goes up or down right now. I guess it's going down, but then again, it goes up a lot of days too. So who the heck knows really what it's doing here. So a lot of people like to diversify some capital out of the stock market into real estate especially for their IRA or 401k. We're about a third of our investors self-direct their IRA into real estate. By the way, if you don't know how to do that or know what I'm talking about, uh, check out our other web uh, webinars on peoplescapitalgroup.com about self-directing your IRA or just schedule a call with me. We can talk about how that process is done. I've helped uh, dozens of people self-direct their IRA in real estate successfully. So great way to hedge against the uh, stock market there and diversify into brick and mortar assets that are professionally managed in high demand markets. So real estate's generated more financial value for more people than any other investment category, any other asset class in history. About 60% of billionaires' wealth is held in real estate because of the incredible tax advantages of real estate, which we'll touch on in this, but that's this presentation isn't too much about that. So the benefits of owning real estate, of course, include cash flow, equity appreciation, right? We try to buy for a good price, renovate the units, force value into it, Harvest that equity growth every three to five years of the cash out refinance. That's a tax-free payout to our investors. And of course, tax depreciation is something real estate gives as well, which is a great way to write off your cash flow and have a completely tax-free investment that creates no additional tax burden. And that's why busy professionals like us that earn a high W-2 because they get nailed on taxes. And if you're good at your job and you earn a lot, then you're going to be paying the tax ban about 30 to 40% of your income. So on your investments, you want to try to avoid taxes as much as you can on those gains. And we structure our investments so our investors have no additional tax burden from this investment uh, as long as they keep their principal invested. But uh, People's Capital Group here, we started in 2013 to help people invest in real estate. My business partner, Seth Martinez, and I have done over 300 transactions here in New Jersey over the last decade. 
And uh, we select qualified investors, either accredited or sophisticated investors. You don't have to be a multimillionaire investor with us. You can also be a sophisticated investor that has experience investing in real estate to qualify as well, as long as you have the minimum um, investment amount of $30,000 plus ample savings and income. But we pride ourselves here at um, sharing our experiences. We have monthly networking events, uh, quarterly, uh, monthly webinars. Uh, we do weekly podcasts, so a lot of content. We don't do the uh, boot camps or sell the education. We really just help people invest in real estate. All of our education is completely free. Over 25 years of experience in our company here, and we offer passive investments to qualified investors in high demand apartment buildings here in New Jersey that we buy for mis uh, mismanaged at discounted prices and improve for our investors to create cash flow and big lump sums upon the refinance. So our mission is to make real estate more attainable for more people, because when I got into real estate, I realized that it's not what the gurus told me. In fact, owning real estate and being a landlord or even managing a management company, once you get enough doors, it becomes a job and not a fun job or a very profitable job either. So we do find around 12 to 15 units. A lot of people get tired of being a landlord or managing a management company, and it makes a lot more sense to invest with a group into a bigger property with a real estate syndication, that's what we are here at People's Capital Group, a real estate syndication and that allows investors to get more real estate for their dollar, get into bigger properties that offer more protection and better returns, and also not have to run around and be a landlord every day and deal with the shenanigans of managing real estate, which is our responsibility here. Instead, you get monthly updates, quarterly financials, quarterly payments to your account, and the annual tax returns are done for you. At People's Capital Group, we help you invest in real estate. Build your wealth by owning professionally managed apartment buildings in the northern New Jersey market. We want to show you how owning real estate is attainable, even for the busy professionals that don't have the time or experience investing in real estate. Now, we only work with select people who are serious about building wealth. So find out if you qualify at peoplescapitalgroup.com. But let's break into some markets that we focus on here at People's Capital Group and kind of talk about markets we like to specialize in and why we buy in those markets. All right. And by the way, I see more people jumping on here. Great to see. Uh, put those questions in the Q&A in the chat. We'll get to take care of all of them at the end here. So Patterson, New Jersey, let's start here, top right. Close proximity to New York City and affordable, right? So a fun game to play is uh, what's the cheapest real estate within an hour of New York City, All right? New York City, uh, arguably the greatest city in the world, huge uh, uh, population hub here, not enough housing in New York, New Jersey, just uh, too many people need to live here, not enough housing, huge amount of demand, not enough supply. Good problem to have if you're a landlord, right? And uh, so in Patterson, though, you find that you actually can get some real estate for your dollar. You get a little more uh, property for your dollar there and say than Jersey City or Hoboken or something like that. Um, even Newark, it's more affordable than Newark now. Um, but you know, Patterson has a lot of opportunity. We see areas around where the uh, sports center is, the old racetrack there. They're redeveloping that. That's a redevelopment zone. They're bringing in a bunch of storefronts and condos above it near the Great Falls there in Patterson. There's also a lot of uh, OZ zones, opportunity zones in Patterson, New Jersey. Opportunity zones offer incredible tax benefits. It's a federal, uh, the federal government put it in place uh, a few years ago, and it's a really huge benefit for in, in owning real estate long term. It gives you a ton of tax benefits to invest in opportunity zones. So big institutionalized funds, you know, pension funds, hedge funds, they invest in opportunity zones because they love the tax benefits of it. So we actually don't buy in opportunity zones. We buy around opportunity zones because in those opportunity zones, like in Patterson, New Jersey, we recently bought a 25 unit and an 11 unit right around uh, opportunity zones where they're doing a ton of development, right? Where the cranes are in the air. We like to buy around where the cranes are in the air. We don't necessarily want to be the crane in the air. I mean, maybe you do, maybe you don't, know, but for the time being, we like to buy around the cranes in the air because we find that in those opportunity zones, in these high development areas, um, sometimes buying right in that high development area, right in that opportunity zone, you really have to pay a premium to get in there. You're bidding against institutionalized capital, and it tends to be very expensive to, to pay a premium to buy real estate in an opportunity zone. So the best thing to do is buy real estate around that opportunity zone because what happens to your value of your real estate, it goes up 
because the real estate around you is being developed and it's being sold for top dollar because of the opportunity zone is so advantageous for funds to get into that. So we buy around those areas where we see a lot of booming going on and Patterson, New Jersey has those areas and we've done very well there. Now, here's what we don't like about Patterson. I mean, you got high crime, you got bad schools, but so does Newark, so does Jersey City. I mean, Hoboken has terrible public schools, right? I mean, look at the demand to live in Hoboken. It's through the roof, right? So the, the, the public school argument is, is old fashioned, really. So what we see is um, actually in Patterson, the challenge is rent control. Rent control is kind of strict. We are having a challenge with that right now in one of our buildings. Um, and uh, it's still on track. It's still ahead of schedule, the whole project overall. But it is one of the challenges in Patterson, New Jersey. Same with Newark, New Jersey. We love Newark, New Jersey. We made our first million in Newark. It's got so many things going for it. Just like Patterson's got a train line that allows you to get into Manhattan. It's got the light rail. It's got the path uh, um, uh, there. You, you can take a path right into uh, uh, the uh, city as well. Really easy to commute into the city from uh, New York City, from Newark. And uh, also a lot of Fortune 500 companies are there, universities, and just the proximity to New York City is incredible. It's really right behind Jersey City, but you get a lot more real estate for your dollar in Newark than compared to Jersey City. Also, Newark's a little more landlord friendly than Jersey City, not by a whole lot, though. They are changing their laws to become more tenant friendly in Newark. And we don't like that. So as we see that happening, we are investing less in Newark and Patterson because the rent control there is getting more and more strict. However, these have been great markets for our investors and ourselves here. And we encourage you to always look at opportunities in Newark and Patterson, New Jersey. That's why they're on the top of our list here. Just the population demand too. So many people living in one place. Um, Rahway, New Jersey. We are doing very well on a project in Rahway, New Jersey. Great example of an area that a city, a small city, has its challenges. There's a there's a prison in Rahway, New Jersey. That's always been it's kind of eyesore. But it's got this downtown art scene that's really attractive. Got a lot going for it. Um, there's things to do in Rahway. They have a nice downtown area. And there's proximity to New York City. You can get right on the train, be in Manhattan in 45 minutes. So it has a lot of that infrastructure and those amenities that people are looking for, but it hasn't quite caught up to Maplewood yet or a lot of cities like neighboring that. So that's, a, I think, where it's going, though. So Rahway, New Jersey, keep an eye on that market. Uh, oh, by the way, great uh, landlord-friendly city, Rahway, like very little rent control. There's really basically no rent control. It's phenomenal. So uh, Bayonne, okay, talk about a landlord-friendly city surrounded by tenant-friendly cities. It's like this shining light. I Probably shouldn't talk so much about it because they'll start to get bid up. Although we just bought $4 million worth of real estate there. So, hey, bid up a own. Let's go, baby. Um, so, hot market, huge growth, great location, easy to commute to Manhattan, right below Jersey City, Hoboken, right on that Gold Coast where we just bought a $4 million building, three blocks of the water, 10 minute walk to a light rail station, easy commute in Manhattan. You know, the funny thing is, by the time you get to Manhattan from Bayonne, though, it's actually almost similar to like Rahway or Newark. Or Patterson. Um, Patterson's a little longer. Um, but they own, they're building a ferry so you can commute into Manhattan uh, really in about 20 minutes. So that's the goal for Bayonne there. Uh, definitely landlord friendly rent control too. So check out Bayonne. Uh, Morristown, New Jersey, strong property values. Neighboring towns offer great value as well. Uh, Newton, you know, kind of up in that area. It's not on the list here, but that's, you know, the Morristown area, Morris County in general, we like a lot. Most parts of Morris County, you can commute into Manhattan in about an hour, maybe an hour 20 at most. And um, Morristown, just so much going on. Such a hot little hub, fun place to live, restaurants, nightlife. You know, I remember going there as a bachelor for years. I grew up 20 minutes outside of Morristown. And that's where we would go to party and, you know, find our uh, our next mate. So <laughs> Morristown's a lot of fun. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Bayonne, New Jersey is kind of, I think, on a similar uh, direction as, as Morristown, you could argue, in a lot of ways. Uh, there's a lot of development going on in both Bayonne and Morristown, we see. Plainfield, we'll talk about development, right? It's a huge amount of development going on there. Um, direct train line to New York City, uh, strong rental demand, good rental market, very Hispanic market. Um, so we like Plainfield. Um, there is some rent control laws that are changing, not for the landlord's benefit there, which we don't like. But um, Plainfield, I think, offers a lot of opportunity if you know where to look in that city. Uh, it's also like a smaller, more manageable city. That's kind of nice. Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, great suburban town. We held our office there for six years. Uh, we own some real estate there as well. Slightly more affordable than neighboring towns like Summit. Um, I also like Long Hill Township and kind of keep going down the, 
you know, the train line there, keep going down 78, you know, you got Berkeley Heights, Long Hill Township, then it becomes like Basking Ridge. It's very expensive. I'd love to get real same Basking Ridge, but you know, you're know, really not getting a whole lot of apartment buildings there. But Berkeley Heights is kind of on the train line there. It's not as expensive as Summit. I like Summit, but you're not getting a good deal in Summit, you know. So uh, Berkeley Heights may have opportunities. It's a little less desirable than like New Providence to Summit, but, you know, it's all still ritzy suburban towns where you're going to just grow in value over time and have a nice asset. So, uh, so Somerville, New Jersey, uh, we actually moved our office to Somerville, New Jersey here um, last summer, and we love Somerville. Talk about development, cranes in the air. I drive by the uh, big development going on right on Main Ave here in Somerville, New Jersey. Our office is located on 92 East Main Street in Somerville, and we love what's going on here. Tons of development, uh, train line to community Manhattan, about an hour and 10, uh, nice downtown area. Again, focus on the downtown. Look at Newark. 15 years ago, Newark was not a desirable city to live, work, or invest. Then they really focused on the downtown area. And people would argue at that time, man, you guys are so focused on the downtown. You need to help other parts of Newark that are, are really struggling and still are today. <laughs> it's it's interesting. Newark really has these different markets. You got the downtown area. It's hot. It's it's a fun place to live. There's nightlife. It's, it's safer. Um, and then you have areas around that, you know, you drive five minutes and it gets real dicey really fast. So Newark's interesting like that. So you want to be aware of that in any any city. But, um, you know, the, the amount of uh, the downtown there really brought the city alive. It transformed Newark from a, a zero to a hero, arguably. Somerville kind of did the same thing. You know, 15 years ago, they really focused on their downtown and a nice uh, sidewalk there. Lots of shops, you know, not not many vacancies. It's very full, very lively. Um, so we like that. And when the downtown happens in a city, pay attention because that is the hub. That is the central point of the city or town. And once that's uh, done very well, right, uh, restaurants, nightlife, uh, stores, services, uh, things to do, right? Once that's done well and it's an enjoyable place to live, condos come up around there and so on and more storefronts and more condos. And that's what we focus on. So we see that happening in Somerville, New Jersey. It's already happening. And that's one of the reasons we planted our flag here. We don't own anything in Somerville right now, but we'd love to. So, hey, if you have something brewing there, send it our way. Multifamilies, even small residential and commercial, let me know. We're always looking for a deal in New Jersey, North Jersey. Uh, New Brunswick, New Brunswick, New Jersey. You have Rutgers University there. We like that a lot. Um, there's areas in New Brunswick that are hit or miss. And then there's areas that we really like um, there around Rutgers University. So again, we don't know anything in, in right now there, but we've done a lot of deals through the years in the Brunswicks. Uh, West Jersey in general, beautiful area. Uh, the pandemic has allowed a lot of people to kind of have like a three days in the city or two days in the city and like three days at home, something like that. So you know, if you only have to commute into the city now, maybe two days a week instead of five, now you can live in Chester, New Jersey, you know, or uh, Hunterdon County, right, or, or uh, Sussex County, well, that's more North Jersey. But, um, you know, I, I live in Flemington, New Jersey, for example, and uh, it's a beautiful area. You have all the amenities you need that, you know, is offered in Morristown or Bayonne or Somerville, but, you know, it's quieter. You get a nice amount of land as well. You get a much more amount of real estate for your dollar. So, you know, Flemington, uh, even like areas like Phillipsburg, possibly that's kind of popping a little bit. So we look in West Jersey and as the pandemic has moved more people further out. And just in general, Jersey's a tight market. Generally, uh, in these nicer towns, you tend to find a lot of value if you could ever find a deal, which is hard to do in nicer towns. Uh, Trenton. So finally here, uh, last, uh, probably, I was going to say last but not least, but mm, I think it's actually the least on the list here. So there's a reason it's last. Trenton is the state capital of New Jersey. It has good infrastructure. It has a train line. You could get into Manhattan. You could get into Philly in about 45 to uh, 60 minutes. Um, it actually is closer to Philly than it is Manhattan. Um, but Trenton has a lot of inherent challenges. Um, it has terrible schools, terrible crime. There's not a whole lot of quality jobs there. Um, you do have you know the state capital, so you have a handful of state jobs, but beyond that, there's not a whole lot going on there. Never really took off like Phillipsburg did or Somerville did or Morristown did or you know Bayonne or something like that or Newark or Patterson. Never really took off. It's not that close to the action. 
it's really more in like the Philly market. It kind of plays off that more than the uh, New York City market. So it's kind of not even in this mix of all these other cities and arguably it works off the Philly market. So we like Trenton. We think Trenton has potential. Um, we're only an hour from there. We could manage here from Somerville deals in Trenton, but uh, not really bullish on Trenton. Like I would invest there, but it'd have to be a great deal for a great price. So keep that in mind. You could find deals in any market, but um, it's all about the price at the end of the day. So those are some markets we prefer, why we prefer them, kind of in the order we prefer them arguably as well. And um, But here's the thing, finding a good deal, you know, it helps to have good direct mail marketing, good uh, marketing in place, right? Because the more leads you have, the more deals you're going to be able to review and the better the deal you'll be able to select to purchase. So aggressive marketing, Putting money into marketing is required. We find that usually we'll spend eight to ten thousand dollars on a mailing. That'll get us around thirty to fifty thousand dollars in profit. Okay, so it's generally about a four to five x return on our investment. Remember, there's a lot of time that goes into that, right? You might have fifty to hundred leads to respond to. You're not going to run out to every property, but you're going to go to a few properties that might not pan out. You're going to talk to a number of people that get close and then don't answer your call again. You know, so a lot of that kind of dead ends and, and people that waste your time. That's part of the business of snagging a good deal. Um, also working with brokers is a great way to get deals for the bigger stuff. Uh, purchases over a million dollars are generally traded by brokers. We rarely, rarely find deals in the million dollar space plus um, without a broker involved. Um, but uh, we'll talk about kind of how we uh, get great deals, how we create get great deals and find great deals here in New Jersey, uh, kind of in the million dollar and, and lower range. Uh, because that's where a lot of active investors we work with specialize in. So step one, find the landlord of a mismanaged building in your target market. Okay. It's important to focus on a target market. Okay, you can focus on all the markets I just put out there, but I wouldn't suggest it. I'd say pick three or four of them and really focus on them. If you're focusing on a bigger market like Newark or Patterson, that might just be your target. You might want to just focus on that, especially Newark. It's huge. Um, so we do direct mail marketing to find that landlord. Uh, sometimes we'll talk to management companies to find the landlord. Um, you know, brokers and realtors are the greatest source of deals, but for under a million, we'll say, you know, direct mail marketing, especially the last, uh, more like three, four years ago was a great source of finding off market deals, direct to landlords. Usually landlords are going to be set, need seven to 10 touches to actually respond and cooperate with you. That means a letter, a postcard, a phone call, a knock on the door, um, an online ad, a billboard, okay? They need to see you around. Um, we would have billboards in Newark uh, that people would see that say, we buy houses. And then we'd send them out mailings that say, we buy houses, right? So they're getting a letter from us. They're seeing an ad on Main Ave and, and the number of them on the billboards there. Like, wow, these guys are everywhere. I'm going to call them and reach out and uh, maybe sell my house, right? So that was a great way to do it, kind of just blank in a market, you know, direct mail marketing, billboards. Um, you know, you can target online as well. In a certain areas, you could do targeted online marketing too. Um, online these days is really how most people are selling their houses. But then again, everyone's online and you're up against some pretty savvy internet marketers, your SEO, paid ads. So that could be a great way to get leads. I'm not counting that out. But sometimes the best deals we got were an older demographic over the age 60, getting to a time in their life, they're retiring or slowing down, moving out of state, down to Florida, something like that. And, uh, you know, it makes sense for them to sell the property and they're kind of motivated to sell it as well. They've also owned it for 30 or 40 years and they have a ton of equity. So they don't have to like squeeze every single dollar out of the deal. That tends to be a good way to find a motivated seller. So older demographic, all right, uh, seven to 10 touches, whether it's direct mailing, online, billboards, knocking on doors, all those things are touches, uh, phone calls, right? Cold calling. So those are different ways to connect with landlords and get in front of them and find a good deal. It'll take about 100 leads to find one good deal. To get 100 leads, you have to do about 10,000 pieces. So there's a lot of money behind. There's a lot of numbers behind the scenes. It's not easy. It's not fun. Finding a good deal is work. There's no two ways about it. It's work and it's money. It takes money to find a good deal, advertising. So once you find that deal though, right, 100 leads, one good deal out of that, right? Then step two, build rapport, display your value. Now you might be doing this with a number of landlords out of 100 leads, maybe 10 are really good. You're gonna be building rapport and displaying your value to them. 
Now, maybe one of them comes around quickly and sells you the, the property for a good price, and the other landlords might come around the years to come. So you always want to keep that rapport going, display your value. Maybe if they're not cooperating now, put them on an email drip campaign, uh, have your assistant reach out to them, your telemarketer, at like uh, three to six months down the road. And that's the other thing too. Finding a good deal also involves staff. You know, We have telemarketers, we have marketing companies, we have uh, answering services for the calls that come in. Right, so all these things, uh, we call back the leads and 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 move them forward. But you know, there's there's different people to help us along the way there as well. Step three: discuss the landlord's needs and make an offer answering those needs. Usually, numbers are pretty important. Price is pretty important. Okay, I'm not gonna lie; that's obviously always a factor. But a lot of times, people will say, "Listen, my biggest concern." is making sure, you know, I don't have to pay a realtor, or I don't have to show this to a million people, or I don't have to move tenants out, or I want to make sure my brother's able to live in the basement for the next six months for free, because, you know, he can't work, it's hard to work. Um, so, you know, something like that, it, it tends to be the case. And uh, you want to cooperate with the landlord, recognize their what's important to them. You know, I, I need enough money to move to Florida. Well, how much money do you need in Florida? Well, I need $350,000 to buy a house, and you need hundred thousand dollars of extra spending money to live. Okay, so you need four hundred fifty thousand dollars net on your sale. How much do you owe on the property? Well, I owe half a million. What's it worth? Well, you know what it's worth to you is is uh, one point five million. Maybe you know I'll take a million because if you give me a million, I have no closing costs. I get my uh, my my uh, half a million, right? So understand what their needs are, and then kind of work backwards from there. You know, don't come and be like, oh, this property is worth this. Here's my, you know, what, what are their needs? You know, focus on that. And then from there, you can kind of determine what the property may be able to sell for. Obviously, not every conversation goes your way. Again, 100 leads to get one good deal. A lot of work behind the scenes. Step four, close the integrity and ask your buyer to sell them more, uh, ask them to sell them more of your pro more properties to you, right? More of their properties to you. So uh, do what you say you're going to do in every step of business, whether it's a Section 8 tenant, a contractor trying to pull a fast one, or a landlord you're buying a $10 million property from, have integrity. In every way you do business, of course, I have to tell you this, but uh, that's extremely important. You know, Don't nickel and dime the landlord at the closing table. Now, of course, you want to stick up for yourself and get a good deal. You know, you do an inspection or you, know, you find problems with the property, you do need to retrade or renegotiate at times. But for the most part, you know, close the integrity, don't nickel and dime. If it's a major problem, obviously you need a credit for that or something, but uh, be easy to do business with. Uh, keep that rapport going even after the sale. Um, you know, call them up. Hey, you know, um, one of your tenants, uh, he, he, he's, you know, how, how do you deal with it? Oh yeah, Timmy, I know, right? He's a character. Here's what you do with Timmy. Show up with warm cookies and he'll pay you the back three months of rent. He's a sucker for cookies, you know. So, like, <laughs> whatever the tip is, right? Like, you know, it's it's interesting what the last landlord will give you as tips on the property. Th thanks a lot, Jim. By the way, uh, I love doing that transaction with you six months ago. Do you have anything else you're looking to unload uh, in the next six months or so? You know, yeah, I have I have a 22 unit. I just I'm having trouble collecting the rent, and you know, it's my 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 brother's managing it, but you know he doesn't like to work. So it's not really going that well. So, uh, you know, I want to come out and look at it, Jim. You know, I'd love to put it, put an offer in front of you and, you know, whatever you, you could, you could sit on it for a while, or maybe we could strike another deal. You know, okay, I'll be out there tomorrow. 10. So that's a great way to get more deals, not have to go through a broker or a wholesaler, but by the way, most of our deals are found through brokers and wholesalers, really brokers, anything over a million dollars is generally found through a broker. Wholesalers, we do buy deals for less than a million dollars or direct mail marketing, like I just explained here. All right, so let's break into the value add strategy here. So PCG creates value into these properties by improving the physical condition of the individual units and in the buildings, which in turn will attract higher rents and better quality tenants. So our goal is to bring the property up to the full market rent over the course of the first two or three years. And then complete a cash out refinance, getting about 50% of our investors' initial capital back to them. It doesn't dilute their shares, the refinance, or anything like that. And they have the option to also exit at the refinance, sell their shares in the property, get their entire initial investment back, keep the funds earned from cash flow, keep the funds earned from refinance, and of course, pay capital gains tax on those earnings if they exit the investment or they can invest through an IRA and defer all taxes. That's a great strategy. 
But the best tax strategy is leaving that principal invested, continuing to earn quarterly cash flow payments, big lump sums upon the refinance every three to five years, about 50% of your initial investment back every three to five years. And that's a great way to just keep earning tax-free income. And the reason the cash from the refinance is tax-free is because it is debt. You're not selling the building. It's not cash flow. You're not losing your cash flow machine or your tax write-off machine. You don't have to sell it and go find another deal and pay capital gains tax, right? So when you refinance, you harvest that equity growth. You put cash in your pocket, but you don't have to pay taxes on that cash. Now, your tenants will pay down that debt for years to come. It's a safe amount of debt. The bank's not going to give you more of a mortgage the property will qualify for. Ideally, low interest as well, secured by a, a, cash, a cash flowing asset, right? An apartment bill. So it's good debt. It's safe debt. So that's how we harvest that equity growth put cash into our investors' pocket tax-free. Now they have the exit option, the flexibility to do that, and then pay their taxes, of course, if they exit. But the main goal is to keep the money you're earning, not give it to the IRS. And if that's your goal, then you're going to want to leave your principal invested, keep getting quarterly cash flow checks, and large lump sums upon the refinance every three to five years. But the whole idea of real estate is not to just buy a $20 bill and collect rent on it and you want to buy a $20 bill that you can put $4 into and make it into a $30 bill. It's called value add. Buying a property for a discounted price or at least a fair price, but having room to increase the rents, you know, renovate the units, increase the rents, lease them up for top dollar. And that's our goal. So the last building we bought rents were 35% below market value. We already renovated four units. We're leasing them up for equal to what we targeted, if not more. And uh, so we're renovating units, leasing them up with our in-house property management company. And that allows us to force equity into the building, improve the cash flow, and complete our cash out refinance um, uh, over a three to five year period. That's our goal. So value add strategy is extremely important. You can see here on the right, we have a basic rundown of a renovation we did on a 27 unit in Rahway, New Jersey. Great deal there. Way ahead of schedule, right on target. Uh, well, actually ahead of target on a lot of fronts as far as the construction and what we're leasing units for. So we're ahead of schedule on that. Really nice. But uh, you can see here, we put about $321,000 into the property. We actually uh, ended up uh, increasing the budget a small amount. We ended up closing on it. But that this is a great example of uh, you know the renovations we do to our types of properties. So um, when we buy a property, we look at a property and we try to find a good deal we don't just look at the cap rate. I remember when I first read Rich Dad, Poor Dad 15 years ago, and I went on loopnet.com. I created an account, went on loopnet.com. I'm going to find a deal. So what I did was I searched for high cap rates, right? Because I knew that high cap rates mean you're getting more real estate for your dollar in comparison to the cash flow it's making. Here's the problem. Everyone's searching for high cap rates. It's an easy search to do. You just put it, I want the highest cap, right? So cap rates tell a certain story, but they don't tell the whole story. Uh, so a property with a low cap rate, you might say, oh, that's not making a very good income. It's overpriced. But look at the value add, right? So the building we just bought in Bayonne, New Jersey, we knew that rents were 35% below market value. If rent stops growing today in Bayonne, New Jersey, I can still increase the rent by 35% over the next few years. Now, if that building didn't have that value add, then we would not have bought it. Did we buy it for 50% of market value? No, it's a beautiful building in high demand market. What am I going to do? Bop the seller over the head and give you know take two million dollars of the price? No, I don't have a magic wand. We probably paid about twenty dollars for a twenty dollar bill, but at the end of the day, I know we can put four dollars into it and make it into a thirty dollar bill, and that's value add, right? I know if we bought it for three point nine million. We could put six hundred thousand into it. It's worth five point two million all day long. So we know there's value in the building. There's, we know there's value add to the building. And we're going to execute that and harvest that equity growth through a cash out refinance and get a big tax free payout to our investors over time. Um, so that's what you got to look for in a deal. And that's why I say deals are not found, they're created. There's a little bit of finding to it, but it's really about digging in and creating the deal, right? It's not like there's just some magic search you could do on the internet and boom, there they are. Or 
you know, if you just tweaked your mailing a little bit, you get, you know, that can help, sure. But it's really about looking into the deal, building that rapport with the seller, finding out their motivation, figuring out the value add, you know, looking, oh, your, your brother's on payroll for $70,000 a year and doesn't do anything and lives in the basement for free of one of the units. Like, oh, that's interesting. Oh, let's take that $70,000 payroll out. Oh my God, the property just went up in value by, you know, half a million bucks. Wow. Right. So there's value add. Right. And now initially that's that owner might say to you, yeah, you know, it doesn't make a lot of money. I don't know why it doesn't make any money, but here's the deal you want it. You know, and you're looking at it, you're like, I know why it doesn't make money because your brother's getting 70 grand on payroll. Like, yeah, that's where all the money's going. Yeah. So, like, you look into the deal, you, whoa, there's value add in here. I fire the brother, I got 70 grand in the bottom line, bringing our own management. Right. So, there, boom, there you go. That's how you find value in deals, right? Rents below market value, expenses that are out of line, service providers you're paying too much for. You know, we've looked at properties and said, this guy's paying how much to get the driveway plowed? He's paying how much to get the grass cut? You know, we know we can get that done for half of that. In fact, let's go get some quotes to make sure, right? Call a few local man, uh, local landscaping companies, right? Or snow removal companies. So find the value add in the deal. It's not always that obvious. You got to go a little digging and that's how we create deals. We don't always find them. We kind of create them by going in and looking for in information and also on the surface, trying to recognize the types of sellers we're trying to connect with in the types of markets we're focused on. By the way, I see questions are coming in. Great to see that. I encourage uh, more questions as we go along here. All right, past performance. Uh, by the way, guys, if you have any technical difficulties, um, uh, just let me know as we go along. Hopefully you can hear me and see my screen, no problem here. Okay, past performance. So historically, uh, we've uh, met or exceeded our target returns to our clients. It's very important when you are selecting a real estate fund to invest in, a group of operators to invest in, understand their track record, right? What have they really accomplished in the past? Did they hit the targets they told their investors that they would hit, right? Did they hit their target of returns? Um, and did they do better than that? You know, or did they come short? And why did they come short? What was the excuse? What was the right? what was the reason? Uh, I mean, heck, in the last few years, if you haven't done well in your real estate investments, then it's your fault. The market's been really good. <laughs> so you got to be, you got to look at the market. It's been a great market. You got to do well when the sun's shining here, right? So we... Um, really focus on setting the targets at attainable levels, our return targets, and doing better than that. So we always target about a 10 to 12% annualized return. The best we've done is a 24% annualized uh, cash and cash return. The worst we've done is a 10% annualized cash and cash return. Seth Martinez and I, my business partner, we've done over 300 real estate transactions together, all in New Jersey here. And uh, we focused on single family homes, small multi families, big multi families, mixed use. We buy land. We have some ground up development going in the single family space. We've wholesaled over 100 properties as well. And I actually started as a realtor years ago in 2010 and met Seth Martinez that way in 2011. So we have over 75 investors with us. You know, Seth and I, we bought a six family together many years ago from a We Buy Houses sign I stapled to a telephone pole. We Bought it for a good price, two hundred twenty thousand. We put about seventy five thousand into the property. We refinanced all our money back out within a year. You know, leased it up for top dollar. We said, "Hey, this works. Let's rinse and repeat. Raise more capital and buy more doors." The hardest part was developing our management company in twenty fifteen. But we have an in house property management company, and that really sets us apart from other syndications out there. We also only focus on New Jersey. So we're laser focused on Jersey. Most real estate syndications are going to be maybe located in Jersey, but invest in Texas or Arizona or Florida. There's nothing wrong with that. But what happens is then you're at the mercy of a third party management company, six or seven states away, and that could be a recipe for disaster. So we have our own in-house property management company. We only focus on New Jersey. We buy in areas that are within an hour, within an hour of Somerville, New Jersey, and also allow you to commute to Manhattan generally within an hour as well. That's our recipe for success. But of course, value add is always what we're looking for also. So we have over uh, 75 investors that invest with us. I've shipped about 100 investors these days, uh, three to five year exit options in our investment. And we execute the buy, renovate, refinance strategy of a property. And you can see here's a great example of a building we just closed on in uh, February in Bayonne, New Jersey. And beautiful building, you know, really nice uh 
layout, nicely done, family owned for 40 years, just rents way below market value. Great location, great condition, just needs some uh, renovations as far as uh, kind of updates to the units. They're just outdated. You want to give them the amenities, the whistles and the bells that tenants are seeking these days and give them the updated granite countertops and, and so on, fresh vanities and subway tile that, um, of course, are, you know, uh, quality tenants are seeking. All right, so let's break into the uh, responsibilities here of uh, People's Capital Group and uh, our investors. I see more questions are coming in. Great to see. Keep them coming. I'll answer all those in just a few minutes here. We wrap up. Wow, sorry, 740. Boy, am I long-winded. So responsibilities of People's Capital Group, we locate, negotiate, and perform due diligence on real estate opportunities we will look at 400 deals to bring our investors one well-vetted opportunity, okay? And remember, when I first spoke about our marketing, we'll get 100 leads from our marketing, narrow it down to one property from that, right? So that, that's tough too. And we don't always get a property from that, right? We, we might just narrow it down to one, one deal. It might be a smaller deal or something like that. But we'll sometimes look at up to 400 deals to find one. Seth and I will obtain the mortgage so our investors don't have to. It's a big difference between you know, investing yourself in real estate and investing in a real estate syndication because with a real estate syndication, you don't have to sign for the mortgage. So your risk is limited to your investment. When you buy real estate yourself, you probably have to personally guarantee the debt. So your risk is limited to not only the money you're putting in, but also the amount of debt you're signing for personally, which can be a huge risk. So with a syndication, you don't have that debt risk. We sign for that instead. We, of course, manage the asset in its entirety with our in-house property management company to make it a performing asset, make it a nicer place to live, increase the rent roll, figure out more ways to make income on the property, lower our expenses, and that allows us to improve the net operating income, improve the cash flow to investors, force the value of the building up, force equity into the building, and then harvest that equity growth every three to five years through a cash out refinance. The responsibilities of the investment partners is you must be qualified to invest as an accredited or sophisticated investor. Uh, so an accredited investor is a net worth of $1 million, not including their primary residence or an income of $200,000 themselves or $300,000 their spouse. A sophisticated investor is someone that has experience investing in real estate. Maybe you've bought an income property before or reviewed a few of them. Maybe you have uh, excess, you've uh, bought your own uh, properties before. Um, and you have the minimum investment amount of $30,000 plus excess savings, plus ample income, because you don't need to live on the returns of the investment. So we work with both accredited you know, millionaire investors and sophisticated, experienced investors, not yet at the accredited level. So that's why a lot of people like us as well, because we don't just accept millionaire accredited investors, we actually accept a larger spectrum. So we have doctors, lawyers, business owners, C-suite executives. We also have teachers and firefighters and police officers that invest with us. Maybe they self-direct their IRA or 401k into real estate, You know, take $30,000 a year or so and try to put it into an opportunity with us, plant that seed. And, and when they that refinance happens and they get a big lump sum payout from that, they reinvest that in another opportunity, plant that seed, and in time that grows into a harvest as well. So that's the idea of investing wisely and building legacy wealth, investing continuously uh, in high demand assets with good operators so that those investments grow over time, mature into a bigger return, and those returns that can then be used to create new investments and new opportunities. And that's how you really build exponential legacy wealth uh, through time. The investors also have to procure the approved funds uh, to the title company prior to closing, and the investor does not personally guarantee the mortgage or take any responsibility in the day-to-day -day management. The process is actually quite easy once you're qualified to invest with us, but you do have to be qualified to invest with us. We have more investors than we have opportunities, so when the opportunities are sent out to our qualified investors, they usually have about two to three weeks to make a decision on it, complete the e-docs, and complete the investment. It's another reason why a lot of our investors benefit more quality time. You don't have to run around and be a landlord or property manager or manage a management company or look at 400 bad deals to find one well-vetted opportunity. We do all that for our investors and bring that to them so they can review the opportunity in depth and see if it's a fit for their goals. 
No experience in real estate is necessary. A sophisticated investor should have some experience in real estate, according to the SEC. So that is something we can discuss on our discovery call. If your experience is uh, qualifies you or not, um, that's a good question for the discovery call, qualification call that we can set up to discuss that. Uh, accredited investors do not need to have experience in real estate. Diversification of your investment portfolio. I remember when I graduated college, my uh, real uh, college advisor said, you know, just pile your money into your IRA, put it into the stock market in a mutual fund. And if you're lucky, when you're 59 and a half, you can retire. I said, no, nah, I think there's faster ways to build wealth more aggressively. And um, there's the wrong advice. You know, the right advice is actually diversify over multiple asset classes. You should have some stocks and bonds, but you should also be invested in quality real estate that's managed by good operators in high demand markets, you know, good real estate syndication, whether it's Grant Cardone or People's Capital Group, it, it doesn't matter. Put your chips on the table, invest wisely in real estate, with good operators in good areas. And over time, that diversification will allow you to have a stronger portfolio that's less volatile with the stock market going up and down and up and down and a little more uh, long-term investment strategy, less volatile, more predictable, might help you sleep a little better at night as well. Expertise and guidance. We help people from self-directing their IRA, also on their own investments as well. If you're invested with People's Capital Group, you actually have access to me, Aaron Fragnito. I've done over 300 real estate transactions. So if you're also an active investor, but you're investing passively with us as well, which a lot of people do, um, you can bounce questions off me for deals you're doing also, and I'm here to help. Ownership and high demand real estate. So we focus on high demand markets that we talked about earlier. We allow quality uh, qualified investors to participate in those buildings where they normally wouldn't have access to those types of deals. Best practices of contracting and sales. So we treat our contractors, our investors, our tenants all the same with integrity and professionalism. And that's important to do, of course, in everything you're doing with your business. And professionals do the work for you in in-house property management company. Completely uh, passive investment with monthly updates telling you exactly what's going on with your property. Quarterly financials sent to you through email. Quarterly uh, cash flow paid out through ACH direct to your account. And the tax returns, K-1 tax returns done for you at the end of the year, sent right to your CPA. Our investors have a nice uh, online dashboard. They can log on to their investor dashboard and get all that information as well. Kind of like investing in a mutual fund or something like that or a Meritrade account. But instead of stocks, you're invested in real estate. Options for self-directed IRAs and solo 401ks, about a third of our investors use a self-directed IRA to invest with us. So if you want to learn more about that process or you're selecting the right IRA custodian, let's set up that call and let's connect and I'll help you guide you on the IRA custodian there. There's me, Aaron Fregnino on the right. I'm the senior managing member here at People's Capital Group. I'm more on the investor relations side, forward-facing, marketing, branding, education, weekly podcasts, monthly webinars, monthly networking events. And of course, uh, Seth Martinez here is more behind the scenes of the operation and uh, managing the management company, due diligence of initial assets, overall company management, internal operations. So Seth is more of the operations guy. I'm more of the face of the company. And that's how a lot of real estate syndications are run successfully, because quite frankly, both fronts are full-time jobs. And then of course, we have staff under us. Uh, together, we've completed over 300 real estate transactions in New Jersey. We've been investing together since 2011 in uh, New Jersey here. So here's the process to proceed. Step one, we set up a discovery call, peoplescapitalgroup.com. Uh, in fact, what I'll do is I'll put that link in the chat as well. So you can click that link to schedule a call with me. But I'll put that in the chat here so all of our uh, friends can take a look there um, as far as scheduling that discovery call. That's the first step. Once we have that discovery call set up and we complete that call, I'll make sure you're qualified on that call. Uh, make sure it's a fit for you, what we do here at People's Capital Group. Answer your questions as well. Kind of break into the fund a little more on the specific opportunity. And then we'll review uh, information on latest private offering. Uh, you can create your investor dashboard as well. Kind of dig into the offering, watch the webinar, look at the pictures, go to the financials. And then when you're ready, you sign the e-docs and wire the funds, the operating account, the fund. And then uh, at that point, you have ownership in the LLC that is owning the real estate or about to own the real estate. Investors can get quarterly ACH, ACH payments right to their account, uh, monthly updates explaining exactly what's going on with their property and quarterly financials as well. 
Uh, by the way, we have a, a, web, a live event here. Uh, we do our own live events every third Tuesday of the month. Our next live event uh, is going to be in Jersey City. And it's gonna, we're going to talk about how funds are structured to protect investors. So May 16th in Jersey City, join us there, 6.30 in the evening. We get about 50 or so investors out at these events, active real estate investors, passive investors, realtors, other service providers in and out of the industry. Um, so it's a great place to meet people that are investing with us and just rub shoulders with like-minded individuals and meet other people in the industry, movers and shakers as well. So we do this every third Tuesday of the month in uh, New Jersey. We usually do it in Somerset, New Jersey, but we're actually doing this one in Jersey City. We'll do a few more in Jersey City and probably circle back to Somerset in the fall. So check out our events here if you want to learn about the monthly event uh, when you know or the next ones that are coming up. Um, let's schedule that call and we can talk about the events coming up. And uh, also, we are always uh, open to sponsors for events and things like that. So if you want to build your brand with us and our 10,000 investors on our email list, set up a call with me as well. We can talk about different sponsorship opportunities there. That's it for me tonight, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. I put a link in the chat to schedule a call with me, Aaron Fragnito, to do our initial discovery call. So whether you're curious about if you qualify, uh, finding good deals, uh, joining us at our next upcoming event, or just kind of curious about what we do here and you want to dig into it a little more and you have some questions you're not really sure the answer to, let's schedule that call, see if it's fit for your goals. All right, I'm going to answer some questions here. Uh, Diane Lang, great to see you, Diane. Thanks for joining here. Very familiar uh, name there. Uh, looking forward to our chat in a couple of days. Uh, so Diane's asked, oh, my sons want to watch this presentation, but we're unable to tonight. Can they go to your website to watch it another time? Yes, it will be up on our website, but probably not for a week or two. Um, but they could always go there. And uh, the older version of this is actually up there already. This version will be up there in a week or two. Um, but we're also going to send this out as a recording to you uh, in 24 hours after this webinar. So Diane, keep an eye out from an email from Zoom in about 24 hours. You'll get the recording of this email to you, okay? Uh, another question from Diane, would you consider Philadelphia or a suburb of Philly in New Jersey? You know, the problem with that is it's over an hour from our office here. We've tried to manage deals that we bought, you know, our first 25 unit we bought was in Paulsboro, New Jersey. That's down near uh, near Philadelphia. It's about 20 minutes from Philadelphia. It's actually just south of it, really. But it's in New Jersey. Now, we found it was very, very challenging to manage that property. We were a good 90 minutes from there. And we found that contractors were less easy to manage and, and everyone else. So um, we actually ended up selling the property for a nice profit. We bought and sold a 25 unit over about a two and a half year period, repositioned it, sold for a nice profit, hit our target to investors. But the reason we sold it and didn't refinance and hold on to it like we do with our assets up here in North Jersey is because it was too hard to manage 90 minutes away. So it wasn't a terrible investment. It was a good investment for everyone. But at the end of the day, if we held on to it, it'd be worth a whole lot more now, right? We sold it in like 2016. So uh, we, we do like to buy within an hour of Somerville, New Jersey. We've been doing this long enough to know our limitations. Our limitations are, hey, if we're going to manage it in-house, we want to be near the asset, at least within an hour from it, at most within an hour from it, right? So um, that's really what we want to focus on. So unfortunately, Diane, Philadelphia is too far from our office. Uh, maybe one day we'll expand out to Philly, but not today. So we're going to, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, as they say, right? So, um, But yes, you'll get the live recording here or the recording uh, in 24 hours from Zoom. Uh, so check your inbox for that. And uh, no to Philly now, but... Hey, who knows uh, down the road here at People's Capital Group, we're always uh, looking for opportunities. But we also have been doing this long enough to know that when you have your infrastructure in place, you know the right brokers and wholesalers and landlords to get good deals in a market, and things are working well for you and your investors in that market. Don't make the mistake many entrepreneurs make and just pull out the rug and go to Florida or go here, or go there. You know, Seth and I used to uh, flip a lot of houses. We flipped over 50 houses in our career, and we were damn good at flipping low and mid-sized houses, generally selling between 300 to 500,000. Uh, and then what happened was we were so good at flipping houses, we said, let's get into flipping million-dollar homes so we can make bigger returns. What happened was we used the same contractors on our mid-small homes to renovate big million-dollar homes. They ended up not getting done right, and we sold some for a loss. It was the only time we ever lost money in real estate. We said, you know what? 
First of all, let's make sure our investors earn a 12% annualized cash and cash return. And they did. We made sure that at the closing table. So we lost money, but our investors never did. In fact, they earned a 12% annualized return, which was right on target. And we said, hey, we're going to learn from this. You know, flipping high end million dollar homes is not the same as flipping a half million dollar home. And we are set up to flip 300 to $500,000 homes. That is our infrastructure. That was our infrastructure at the time. Now, we don't flip houses much anymore these days because we're so focused on our apartment building syndication. But the bottom line is we pivoted too aggressively there and we got into a space where we weren't skilled and we didn't have the infrastructure properly in place. So it was not successful. So we've been doing this long enough to know when you have an infrastructure in place, when you have a successful track record, rinse and repeat. Do not go out and try to build it all again in a new market. So that's why we focus on New Jersey. It's one of the highest demand markets in the country, and we know how to navigate it, and we have access to great deals here. So if you want to learn more about what we have coming up on the horizon, let's schedule that call. Let's get to know each other a little bit better. I'd love to learn about your investment goals. My name is Aaron Fragnito. That's all the questions we have here for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to leave this link in the chat for about uh, two more minutes before I close out the webinar. So click that link. Let's schedule that call. I look forward to chatting. Thanks. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.